Christmas Day in the Workhouse Poem by George R. Sims Read by Jules Harlock For LibriVox.org It is Christmas Day in the workhouse And the cold bare walls are bright With garlands of green and holly And the place is a pleasant sight for with clean washed hands and faces in a long and hungry line the paupers sit at the table for this is the hour they dine and the guardians and their ladies although the wind is east have come in their furs and wrappers to watch their charges feast to smile and be condescending putting on pauper plates to be hosts at the workhouse banquet they've paid for with the rates Oh, the paupers are meek and lowly with their thanky, kindly mums. So long as they fill their stomachs, what matters whence it comes? But one of the old men mutters and pushes his plate aside. Great God, he cries, but it chokes me, for this is the day she died. The guardians gaze in horror, and the master's face went white. Did a pauper refuse their pudding? Could their ears believe aright? Then the ladies clutched their husbands, thinking the man would die, struck by a bolt or something, by the outraged one on high. But the pauper sat for a moment, then rose mid-sentence, silence grim, for the others had ceased to chatter and trembled in every limb. He looked at the guardians, ladies then, eyeing their lords, he said, I eat not the food of villains whose hands are fouled and red whose victims cry for vengeance from their dark unhallowed graves. He's drunk, said the workhouse master, or else he's mad and raves. Not drunk or mad, cried the pauper, but only a haunted beast, who, torn by the hounds and mangled, declines the vulture's feast. I care not a curse for the guardians, and I won't be dragged away. Just let me have the fit out. It's only on Christmas Day that the black past comes to goad me and prey upon my burning brain. I'll tell you the rest in a whisper. I swear I won't shout again. Keep your hands off me, curse you. Hear me right out to the end. You come here to see how paupers the season of Christmas spend. You come here to watch us feeding as they watched the captured beast. Here's why a penniless pauper spits on your paltry feast. Do you think I will take your bounty and let you smile and think you're doing a noble action with the parish's meat and drink? Where is my wife, you traitors, the poor old wife you slew? Yes, by the God above me, my Nance was killed by you. Last winter my wife lay dying, starved in a filthy den. I had never been to the parish. I came to the parish then. I swallowed my pride in coming, for ere the ruin came, I held up my head as a traitor, and I bore a spotless name. I came to the parish, craving bread for a starving wife, bread for the woman who loved me through fifty years of life. And what do you think they told me, mocking my awful grief, that the house was open to us, but they wouldn't give out relief? I slunk to the filthy alley, "'Twas a cold, raw Christmas Eve, "'and the baker's shops were open, "'tempting a man to thieve. "'But I clenched my fists together, "'holding my head awry, "'so I came to her empty-handed "'and mournfully told her why. "'Then I told her the house was open. "'She had heard of the ways of that, "'for her bloodless cheeks went crimson, "'and up in her rags she sat, "'crying, "'Bide the Christmas here, John.' We've never had one apart. I think I can bear the hunger. The other would break my heart. All through that eve I watched her, holding her hand in mine, praying the Lord and weeping till my lips were salt as brine. I asked her once if she hungered, and she answered no. The moon shone in at the window, set in a wreath of snow. Then the room was bathed in glory, and I saw in my darling's eyes the faraway look of wonder that comes when the spirit flies. And her lips were parched and parted, and her reason came and went, 
for she raved of our home in Devon, where our happiest years were spent. And the accents, long forgotten, came back to the tongue once more, for she talked like the country lassie I wooed by the Devon shore. Then she rose to her feet and trembled and fell on the rags and moaned, And give me a crust, I'm famished, for the love of God, she groaned. I rushed from the room like a madman and flew to the warehouse gate, crying, food for a dying woman, and the answer came, too late. They drove me away with curses, then I fought with a dog in the street, and I tore from the mongrel's clutches a crust he was trying to eat. Back through the filthy byways, back through the trampled slush, up to the crazy garret, wrapped in an awful hush. My heart sank down at the threshold, and I paused with a sudden thrill, for there in the silvery moonlight my Nance laid cold and still. Up to the blackened ceiling the sunken eyes were cast. I knew on those lips, all bloodless, my name had been the last. She called for her absent husband. Oh, God, had I known, had called in vain and in anguish, had died in the den alone. Yes, there in a land of plenty lay a loving woman dead, cruelly starved and murdered for a loaf of parish bread. At yonder gate last Christmas I craved for a human life. You who would feed us paupers, what of my murdered wife? There, get ye gone to your dinners, don't mind me in the least. Think of the happy paupers eating your Christmas feast. And when you recount their blessings in your parochial way, say what you did for me, too, only last Christmas day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.